Today, we are going to talk about Jack Henry and Associates. This is a core banking company that also dabbles in payments. And I thought we would do a brief business overview, kind of how they make money, talk a little bit about their future prospects and their capital allocation and anything else that might come up that's interesting about Jack Henry. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and I guess dive in a little bit. Hey, Andrew. What's up? All right. Let's talk about Jack Henry. So what does Jack Henry do? Jack Henry is a company that functions in the core banking industry. So for those of you unfamiliar with what core banking is, it is a Core banking, according to Gartner, is a back-end system that processes daily banking transactions and posts updates to accounts and other financial records. Core banking systems typically include deposit, loan, and credit processing capabilities with interfaces to general ledger systems and reporting tools. So what does all that gobbledygook mean? That basically means that Jack Henry is one of the companies that helps banks operate on a daily basis. So everything that banks do on a daily basis from managing our personal accounts. For example, if you go online, you log into your online bank and you look at your account information, Jack Henry is one of the companies that helps maintain that information. If you go to an ATM and take money out with your ATM, Jack Henry is one of the companies that helps maintain that. If you take out a loan, they keep track of your loans, your loan payments, all that stuff with the bank is all done through Jack Henry. So they are the core operating system that operates over underneath everything that goes on at a bank. To say that this is a sticky business is <laughs> quite the understatement. So you think about what a pain it is for us to change bank accounts. Think about a bank changing all of their operating system to go from one to the other. It is incredibly sticky. So the fact that Jack Henry is one of the big players in this field, now this may not sound like something super exciting. It's been around forever. Jack Henry is a company has been around since uh, around 46 years, I believe now. And they are one of the big players in this field. They operate along with uh, FIS or Fidelity National Services and Fiserv. So they are Jack Henry's really main niche. So of the three players, Jack Henry focuses mostly on smaller banks and credit unions. The largest banks that they operate with are around 50 billion in assets. So these are small banks. These are not big banks that they're operating. They're not playing with the Wells Fargo's or the city banks of the world. They're playing with mostly the smaller mom and pops that you see in your local cities or around your communities. They also work with credit unions and that is their main focus. Fiserv is really the big player. They're the ones playing with the big boys and FIS, the one I mentioned earlier, they kind of sit in between of those. So the credit unions and the banks, they all have similar operating systems, but they don't. And so the regulatory requirements are a little bit different. And so because of that, Jack Henry has focused their products and their services to help focus more towards each different niche that they're trying to serve. Now, one of the things that Jack Henry has been working towards over the last two or three years is switching all of these legacy systems that a lot of these credit unions have through Jack Henry to the cloud to make them more efficient, make them faster, and also allow these credit unions and banks to be able to pivot quickly or quicker to more services that they can offer their customers. So one of the things that has been going on in the financial world is the huge disruption or potential disruption that fintechs have been, I guess, perpetrating on banks. And one of the things that Jack Henry, with their technology, they're allowing the credit unions, for example, to offer a lot of the same services that, for example, the fintechs like PayPal or Square can offer. So if you bank with your credit union, a lot of the services that you would get from Square, you can now start get it with your credit union. And Jack Henry enables a lot of that open banking, the APIs, all that high tech fintech stuff is now being offered through Jack Henry. So that is really kind of what Jack Henry does is the core banking. So let's talk a little bit about maybe how they make some money. So if we talk about how Jack Henry makes money, they have four different segments that they offer everything through. So they have, I guess, three core banking platforms. They have Silver Lake, CIF, and Epicis. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about those, but really what I want you to understand about those is those are the services that they offer through their segments. So they have four different segments that they offer everything through. So the four segments are core, payments, 
the complementary and corporate and other corporate and other, frankly, is kind of a catch all where they throw everything that's not of a guess mentionable size revenue wise or operations wise. It's also where they put a lot of the losses that may occur <laughs> through core and payments and complementary. So that's that's kind of the, I guess, overview of that part of it. So how does Jack Henry make money? So they make money through two main operations of what they offer. The first are contracts. So because their core banking, which is about 35 to 40% of their business, give or take, the core operates by offering contracts, generally five to seven year length in contracts to their customers. And that may sound like a long time, but considering that most of these banks have, they have a very sticky product with what Jack Henry is offering, five to seven years is probably an understatement, but that's where Jack Henry really gets people is they have these long-term contract with their customers. They have great customer relations. They do quarterly surveys with all of their customers and trying to kind of get a feedback for what Jack Henry's customers feel about them. And Jack Henry is not, not a company that you and I are going to interact with on a daily basis. Majority of what they offer, 99.9% uh, .9 of it is all for the banks and the credit unions. It's not for public consumption per se. So this is like a plumbing of banking, if you will. And so when they are surveying their customers, they're really surveying the people that are paying them for what they're offering. And over the last 10 years, Jack Henry has been voted one of the best companies to work for as well as to work with. And their customer service rating, it ranges between about 4.75 to about 4.9, uh, depending on the year. So that is a really, out of really five. High, out of five. Yeah. So that's really, really high ranking. And their net promoter score, I looked it up before we came online, is nine, which ranges from 100 plus to 100 negative. And when you look at nine may not sound all that impressive, but anything above zero is considered very good. And Jack Henry in the banking world is one of the highest. They're not as high as First Republic, the bank we talked about a while ago, but they're they're definitely in that ballpark. And they're higher than companies like UPS, FedEx, uh, Citibank, JP Morgan, higher than all of those. So it's not a big company market cap wise. It's around 17 to 20 billion in market cap. So it's pretty small, but this company has got a great reputation. They treat their employees really well. They treat their customers really well. Okay. So all that to say their reoccurring revenue is very, very high because of these long term contracts that they offer to their customers. They also have a subscription business. So part of what they offer their customers are these contracts to buy their software or their hardware. And all this gets installed by Jack Henry. They also offer maintenance contracts for these programs and for these softwares that they're offering these banks. And so instead of the bank having to have a tech on site or pay these people, they pay Jack Henry to maintenance and serve service all these contracts. And so because of that, that gives Jack Henry a lot of reoccurring revenue as well. So the company is in a great position as far as that goes. They have a lot of high loyalty with their customers. They also drive a lot of innovation with what they're doing. Uh, they're very, very innovative. And the company has across the board, great customer scores, great customer reviews, high reoccurring revenue, which helps the company project into the future what they think they're going to do. And there's lots of great stuff that is going on with the company. So that's kind of an overview of kind of how they make money and kind of what they do. So it's basically a reoccurring revenue is really what drives the company. So they have the contracts and then they have, I guess, the SaaS part of the business. They also have a payments business. So this is something that's newer to Jack Henry. The core banking is really the legacy part of the bank, even though they've moved towards a, a recurring revenue and a SaaS business model for that part of the business. They also have a payments part of the business. So along with that sticky part of the core banking, they're also working with all those customers that they have great relationships with to offer uh, payments processing as well. So these credit unions and these small banks can go out into the marketplace and they can offer payments to their customers as well. And that is a growing part of their business. It's probably the fastest part of the growing part of the business. And that, that came through acquisitions about seven, uh, about five years ago. They bought a business called Banyo 
Studio, which is their processing arm of their business. And that's really helping drive the growth in the revenues for that company and for that part of the segment of the business. Let's talk a little bit about some of their future growth prospects. So some of the future growth prospects for the company really come from what we were talking about before. The company is conservatively managed and they are they really drive the returns with the innovations that they do. They spend a lot of money on R&D and they spend a lot of money on SG&A. So they're investing in technology and that is really where they think they're going to continue to shine and to grow. And open banking, the APIs, the treasury management platform, the payments hub, all this stuff is really at the heart of what is going on in the fintech world. And Jack Henry has really embraced all of this. And they've actually been working towards this for the last five or six years. Some of the companies that they're competing against, Fiserv and FIS, are a little later to the game in this respect. And Jack Henry was a little bit ahead of the curve on this. And one of the things that you see with this, it's kind of interesting. When you look at the core banking segment, if you will, of the fintech world, there's really the three big players. There's other smaller ones. Well, the IBM is not small, but the, the revenues that they drive from this part of the business is, is really kind of minuscule compared to what everything else that IBM does. But one of the things that Jack Henry, they've really settled into a niche and they really focus on that. And they really, if you listen to their earnings calls, if you listen to their investor presentations, they really, really focus on what they're good at and they're trying to stay in their lane, so to speak. They may branch out a little bit above the 500 million in asset cap, but they really don't go much above that. And they really try to play in the field that they feel like that they're really good at. And because they've focused so much on their customer retention, as well as pleasing the customers that they're working with, they've done a great job of continuing to just steady, steady growth. This is not a company that you're going to see a lot of people talk about outside of kind of the nerds like I am about fintech that they just don't generate a lot of excitement because they don't play with the, the big boys. They don't play with the Wells Fargo's and the city banks. And because of that, they really fall under the radar. Their tech innovation and their focus on continuing to drive R&D and continuing to commit to spending money on R&D, SG&A, all those things are going to continue to drive the company forward. So if you look at the projections for the company, again, this is not a high flyer. This is not a company that you're going to see 50% revenue growth from. The company is projecting around 5 to 7% revenue growth over the next few years. And it's not super exciting. And it's not something that every, you know people are going to get you know, the compounder bros <laughs> are not going to get super <laughs> excited about a company like, like Jack Henry. But the other part of that is if you look at the stock returns for the company over the last five years, they've done fantastic and they've actually beaten the S&P over the last five years. So the company is really, really considered, it's a great investment. So let's talk about some of the capital returns as well as what they're kind of trying to do. So they have three focuses on trying to return capital to investors. The first is dividends. So the company does pay a dividend. It is, it's not a huge part of their capital return, but it's a steady, it's about a, less than a percent of their yield. So it's not huge, but they do pay a dividend and they are committed to paying a dividend and they've been doing it for quite some time. A stock purchases, that's a big focus for the company. And they talk a lot about that in their investor presentations, as well as their earnings returns and acquisitions is another part of this. So the company is, and they're not a serial acquirer by any stretch of the imagination, but they do use acquisitions as a great way to add on different, I guess, bolt-on acquisitions is probably a good way of putting it. They find different innovations or different tech that maybe they aren't, I guess, leading edge on, but they feel like would be a great addition to their their offerings to their customers. And they'll buy different things. For example, a few years ago, they bought a company that specialized in creating tech to help digital opening account openings. So that may sound like, okay, well, whatever. But one of the things that's really been innovative about the fintechs like Square and PayPal is the ease and the quickness of open to an account online. And if you go to any of the legacy banks like the big boys, Citibank, but Wells Fargo, opening an account online is it's cumbersome at best. And so one of the things that's really helped drive some of those fintechs like Square, for example, is the ease of being able to open an account. So Square or Jack Henry is now 
offering those capabilities to these credit unions, which is going to help them drive more customers as well as more deposits, which is you know great for the banking industry. All right. So that's kind of, I guess, the focus. Let's talk about some of the capital returns a little bit. If you could pull that chart back up, the returns on capital or returns on equity and all those kinds of things. So when I was talking about acquisitions and, and all those things, the company is very conservative when it comes to trying to drive returns for the company. As you can see, their returns on invested capital have been stellar across the board. 30%, 19.5, 19.8, 19.2. .8, the returns on equity kind of right in the same ballpark. When the company acquires other companies, generally Jack Henry does it through cash flow. If you look at their balance sheet, they have almost no debt. Uh, I think the last quarter they did take on about 500 million in debt, which is peanuts compared to their asset cap and their market cap. So the company is, they run on free cash flow. If they can't generate from their earnings and from their free cash flow, they won't do it. And so they're not one of those companies that are going to go out there and make huge, big, splashy acquisitions to try to, to juice up investor excitement. Instead, they focus more on their cash flow and the kind of returns that they can get from generating that free cash flow. And so the returns on capital are fantastic. And if you compare their returns on capital, 19%, 20%, 17% over the last five or six years to their cost of capital, it's outstanding. Their cost of capital runs around five to 7%, depending on what kind of uh, investment returns there are out there on the interest rates, the risk-free rates that are, that are available out there. So uh, it's, a, it's a strong capital return company. They do a great job of keeping their costs low and keeping the, their cost of capital as well as their cost of debt, cost of equity low. So they have you know great capital returns over a long period of time. So it's a fantastic company. They operate in a, in a niche that is, like I said, very under the radar, but their returns against the S&P 500 over the last five years have been outstanding. And they've actually beaten the S&P over the last five years. So it's a great future investment if the, uh, return, if the stock price comes down a little bit. <laughs> If so, the price is right. If the price is right, yes. If the price is right, this could be a potential fantastic. It's a conservative company. They do a great job of managing their capital and making sure that they stay stay in their lane, so to speak. And mm -hmm. they have a lot of great customer retention and they treat their employees really well. All around, it's a fantastic company. So I guess those are some of my thoughts on Jack Henry. I mean, that quintessential cash cow and they're going to grow as the banks grow and I mean, I've had this stock on my watch list for a while now, and I'm just waiting for it to come down. You know, the PEs have been high. You know, it's one of those things where you look at the returns on capital, the return on invested capital is high, but their PE is high. You could argue that it one drives the other, but the flip side of that is we, we want to buy it for a good price because we want that capital return to come to us over a period of time. Did you want to talk on the valuation? You threw a valuation together using one of the Dom spreadsheets. All right. So we look at the returns the company is getting. So again, if you look at the revenue growth, nothing to like go, oh my God, this is amazing. Eight to 7% over the period of time, kind of moving back towards the terminal year, which is about around 2%. So that is really not huge numbers, but that's, you know, very consistent in the margins are are great and the company is projecting that their margins are going to expand a little bit over the next couple of years. So that will help drive the returns as well. They have fantastic returns on capital. Their free cash flow is, is growing and it'll continue to grow over the next five to 10 years. And so when we look at kind of the bottom line of the whole I guess, valuation of the company. It's coming in pretty fair value, to kind of depending on where we are with the stock price right now. Uh, it's trading around $153 a share. I did the valuation uh, about a month ago or so. So the numbers are still pretty fresh. But considering that the stock price has dropped, there's you know, arguably a margin of safety. It's like 1%, so it's <laughs> not a lot. But the the company is pretty fairly valued right now so you could say that that's kind of what the market is seeing that the company they project that the the company should have around a eight is seven to eight percent revenue growth over the next you know five to seven years and the operating margins around 25 to 27 percent cost of capital around five to six percent kind of 
depending. The returns on capital around anywhere from 13 to 20%. So I think that's all pretty much what the market is expecting right now. And given that the fintechs are getting a little bit of a beating right now, there could be an opportunity if the stock price drops any more over the next month or two. Yeah, I appreciate those inputs to let us know what how the market's probably looking at that. So that's Jack Henry. Uh, great, great overview. Thank you.